How's it going, guys? We have an easy question. I'd say this is past level for USMLE step one. Nearly identical question shows up in one of the new NVMe forms. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M E H L M A N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group channel down below. Now start the clip. 34 year old woman. She has a three month history of weight loss and heat intolerance. Serum TSH is low. Physical exam shows no abnormalities. Her brother has type 1 diabetes mellitus. Patient's condition is most similar to which the following. So this patient has Graves' disease, okay? This is past level, as I said. So TSH is low, T3, T4 would be high. And just to clear up all debate as to how do you know that this is Graves' disease, the fact that a brother has type 1 diabetes mellitus, you assembly will do this oftentimes. They want to tell you autoimmune diseases go together, okay? So brother could have rheumatoid arthritis. She herself could have SLE, okay? So this is Graves' disease. So uh, questions asking... Uh, this condition is most similar to which the following. So let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice, we'll go backwards. Choice E, proliferative glomerulonephritis, wrong answer. This refers to PSGN, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Now, this shows up on the new NBME forms written as such. This confuses many students because they're like, what the fuck? Like, this refers to PSGN? Yep. And if you were to Google this, you wiki this, this is just another way of saying PSGN. Okay, so it's a type 3 hypersensitivity, PSGN, immune complex deposition. A lot we can talk about, uh, but this is going to be uh, red urine one to three weeks after strep pharyngitis, sore throat. It can be cutaneous as well. They can give you an eight-year-old who has yellow crusties, uh, impetigo, and then red urine uh, seven days later. Okay, that's PSGN. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, post, or post, what the fuck am I saying? Poison oak. Dermatitis, okay, poison oak, poison ivy, poison sumac. This contact dermatitis, wrong answer. I mean, this is type four hypersensitivity. They're going to give you someone who went hiking, gardening, and they have a linear row of vesicles, okay? The linear row, very buzzy, okay? You're brushing up against the weeds, uh, causes a line, a uh, linear row of vesicles. Wrong fucking answer. It's a T cell response. Choice C. Uh, peanut allergy, wrong answer. This would be type 1 hypersensitivity. It's when you have IgE on the surface of mast cells, basophils, and then you have the antigen, whether it's peanut, uh, B uh, antigen from a bee sting, and that's going to bind to the fab region of the IgE. IgE come in a close proximity. They cross-link mast cell. Uh, basophil degranulate, release histamine, causes atopic dermatitis, or in this case, more appropriately, anaphylaxis. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, graphers host disease, wrong answer. Now, this is probably the only element of trickiness in this question that some students might not know what this is. This is past level, but some students are not going to be 100% sure about the mechanism of graft versus host disease, and then they get tripped up, okay? This is just this is just going to be almost always when you have a bone marrow transplant, uh, and the bone marrow from the graft, okay, the donor, contains T cells that will attack the host, which is the recipient, as foreign. Okay, it's considered a type 4 hypersensitivity because it's a T cell response, okay? So the, the T cells of the donor, the graft, attack the host, which is the recipient, as foreign. Wrong fucking answer. Choice say erythroblastosis vitalis is the correct answer. This is a type 2 hypersensitivity, okay? This is when you have IgG antibodies, almost always against RH, rhesus factor on red blood cells, uh, crossing the placenta and tacking the fetal RBCs. Okay, so you have an RH negative mom, and then you have a first pregnancy with a fetus that's RH positive, presumably because the dad is RH positive, and then you're going to have some sort of mixing of the circulations during a traumatic delivery or instrumentation or spontaneous abortion. Mom forms antibodies against RH, then in the subsequent pregnancy, those IgG antibodies cross the placenta, attack the fetal RBCs that are RH positive, and you're going to get uh, hemolysis in the fetus. Okay. And so varying severities, fetus can die in utero, fetus might survive. And then you have a uh, hemolytic disease, in the newborn, where you just have unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia in the newborn. Okay. High yield for pediatrics. This is a type two hypersensitivity. Okay. Antibodies against cells, receptors. Okay. This is asked on the NBME, as I said, uh, they actually give a presentation of erythroblastosis fetalis and then they ask for Graves' disease. They did the opposite. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.